Oh yeah, I love the lights. All right, can you hear me now? Good, perfect. The lights are a bit bright, but uh, good uh, morning and uh, welcome to the uh, Red Hat breakout sessions. Um, and we're starting it off today. I'm uh, Ian Hood. I'm the uh, chief technologist for our uh, global service providers across all over um, the world. And um, in a bit after I've you know, said a few words, I'm going to have uh, Hannon Garcia um, join me, my uh, colleague from Red Hat, our Taco Solutions Manager. And so we're here to talk about um, getting ready for the edge and virtualizing your central office. And strangely enough, I was actually in a building here in Berlin yesterday, Deutsche Telekom's building, which actually was the original central office that they have. And it's a whole lot different today than it was you know, when they started many, many years ago. So with that, I'm just going to get, uh, get things rolling and kind of see where we get ourselves here. Let's try that one. Let me get that. All right, I'll just make it simple. So, um, so kind of the key here is you know, what's going on, and we all see it around us, is all of our telco customers are really having to transform themselves, really their entire business, and that was the subject of much discussion yesterday, while they're being disrupted. They're really being you know, changed quite heavily. So what's been going on, and I think people may have seen this at a recent uh, Linux Foundation event, that you know, the infrastructure that we have today, you know, we want to try and build it in a software-defined kind of mode. And if we kind of look to the past, right, we had you know, virtual network functions, and it sat on top of OpenStack or VMware, and that sat on top of bare metal. And fairly recently, you know, the own app orchestrator came along to help us out, and you could also potentially put your workloads you know, onto Azure, Rackspace. And where we are kind of right now is people are starting to build some of their network functions in a containerized mode. So now we're going to actually work kind of side by side, you know, OpenStack and Kubernetes, and then be able to push that down onto bare metal or any cloud. Now the direction we all kind of want to get to because of the lifecycle management, and you may have heard the uh, um, the keynote this morning from the AT&T folks that they want to be able to actually do full lifecycle management of containerized functions, virtual functions, have some way to actually run that on top of Kubernetes and then use uh, bare metal and push it to any cloud. So that's kind of you know where the future is in this uh, in this world we're looking at today. And so speaking of all those things, so where are we spending our time, right? There's really a lot of collaboration going on and pretty much almost all of the innovation that's going on is either started in an open source community or is actually that's where a lot of the work is done. And it's all the way, you know, from the bottom of the stack, whether it's the hardware pieces, you know, at TIP, open compute, been a lot of work going on over the course of time in cloud. You know, OpenStack's been around, I guess we're working on about six years right now. Um, now we've brought in a SDN with open daylight, lots of fast forwarding things, storage, Kubernetes is relatively you know, new to the party, and a fairly recent one, and that's what kind of drives some of the conversation we're going to have today, is the Akrano Edge stack. So how do we move this architecture from a centralized thing to the edge of the architecture? Lots of effort in the land of how do I actually automate, do lifecycle management. So that's where the ONAP project comes in, Ansible from Red Hat, the active MQ for the bus um, and airship that uh, you know, the folks from AT&T are uh, pushing quite strongly. But the real place that a lot of the work gets done is at the top of this, because it's great to have all these little projects, but if I don't actually integrate them together, that's where OpenFE comes in, where a lot of the work we're going to talk about is being done to put things together and actually drive all these pieces to build a service, because the end game is actually to get new services out quicker. Right? That's really kind of the key. So one of the things that Red Hat's come up with is if you really want to actually deliver these services, Right? and actually deliver them, and whether it's the new 5G ones, the network edge we're going to talk about today, existing mob mobile services, IoT, analytics, and of course we can't forget about you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and you know, there are some very interesting use cases for blockchain both in enterprise and in telco. So kind of the way we look at it is that you know, most people are kind of very much focused when you, you, know, when you talk to a telco, almost all the work they do is kind of what I call from the basement, right? It's where the network is. Right? They start down with the hardware and they start working their way up the stack, right? But the other half of their business, you know, are the guys that actually run the business and that's the application side. That's kind of the, you know, the IT applications like any business. 
But most other businesses, whether it's financial, whether it's car manufacturers, whatever, they have a lot of data that they use to actually run their business. That's why there's actually a third platform, whether it's a, you know, a data platform, data management platform, that they use to actually you know, run their business. And actually, as we all know, you know, you know, to, you know today's um, oil, if you will, is data. Right? That's really where the money is. So we actually act, have to build an architecture and framework that connects these three platforms together. And so I've simplified the picture. You know, way more complicated than this. I mean, look at that network picture on the left. Right? It's really, really simple. And then I've, even the one that AT&T showed this morning was you know, fairly simple too. But you take a look at this, and there's like so many layers just to the network piece alone, you know, whether it's cable, whether it's mobile. Um, you know, those things, but really you've got the network service elements that, you know, take information from your handset, from your tablet, IoT devices, and bring it into the picture. Now on the right-hand side of this, you know, that's where most of the business people run their applications. So that's IoT, multi-access edge computing, the ones that are traditional to a telco, you know, their whole back office side, things like analytics, cybersecurity, you know, big data, all those kind of things run on the business platform on the right. But if I kind of look at the middle of this picture, that's where we would have to tie this thing together on top of open infrastructure platforms. And so that's where you got to take information in, put it onto a you know, common information bus, and you know, kind of the choices here, uh, we're seeing it in, uh, in most of our customers, it's either going to be used uh, using Kafka or AMQ as an option as to um, how we're going to do it, depending on the size and scale of the use case. And you're going to actually take all this capability, have to be able to store it locally, run some rules on it, and then convert that through API management between these two platforms on the network side and the application side. Now, the other key thing that's going on is sitting at the top of this is that how do I actually bring, you know, bring some of that AI business intelligence into the picture? And this is where you've got people you know, writing algorithms to do capacity planning, how good is the network actually working? You know, one, one question. The other one is, is, what's the take rate of this service? Did it actually, you know, are people actually taking it on? Because you know, some services, you know, people try them, and they go, didn't really like that. I want a different plan. So if I've got some way to actually analyze how good a service is working, I can use these tools to actually, you know, interrogate the network and see how things are going and use it in that purpose. So one of our customers is actually using it to apply capacity planning on the fly to their mobile network. You know, so we're actually going out and querying the, you know, the radio network management side to say, do I have capacity to spin up more, more things here for an event, more subscribers, et cetera. I've got another customer that's actually taking this, and they're using this as a complete automation and provisioning of both their virtual and their physical networks, right, those platforms at the bottom. So really we kind of see it as a way to actually build out this, this architecture use uh, common management and automation tooling across these three platforms to truly run and drive the business that you're looking for. And so with that, we've got a bit of you know, things going on in the, the world out there where the mobile network is going from an LTE world. You know, AT&T's got you know, 5G in the labs, so do others. Um, and some people believe we'll have 5G, maybe some of it early next year. So what's going to happen to the architecture when we head that direction? So lots of different things are possible. Right? So in this journey, we're going to still use that software-defined infrastructure, but you've got enterprise edge services, and you know, we've got faster and faster mobile broadband, but it's not just about the radios and the high speed. We've got you know, much larger machine-to-machine -machine things going on, and we also need to have you know, very reliable, you know, low-latency type services. And if I really want to try and do something you know, quite a bit you know, scary to me, is let's have somebody attempt to do surgery on me remotely while the doctor's somewhere else and got somebody at the paramedic doing, you know, doing it in through a, a robotic camera you know, remotely across the network. Right? So that is potentially possible and people are looking at ways to do that. The one that's actually working today, a you know, little easier to kind of deal with, more of an IoT play, is that there's a collection of um, defibrillators. You know, so if you're having a, you know, uh, an instance out in a, in a city, they're all placed around the city and then you've got an app that says, oh, somebody's having an issue, where's the closest defibrillator? Go get it, here's the instructions here to help, you know, help get this person you know, back to life before the paramedics even arrive. So that one I can see today. Um, this future one of being able to do it on the fly, but even to be able to you know, do, you, know, you see when you go to the eye doctor, 
right? And now they used to do all this kind of, you know, different kinds of lenses to kind of look at things. Now they just, you know, hook you up to a camera, take some pictures, and now they should be able to do that remotely now. So the now thing that we want to take a look at is what does this mean to that entire architecture to actually deliver these services? So a slightly, you know, still simplified picture, but if I sort of take, you know, from now, the one side of this picture, you've got kind of the centralized deployment of, you know, whether it's mobile services, you know, the IMSs, the PCRFs, the packet cores, um, you know, deep packet inspection. Then you've got, you know, things like um, virtual routers, firewalls, and they could be centralized, and you could have, you know, the tier one large sites, you know, so that big central office I was in yesterday, you know, I'd have, you know, some of that technology there. And as I moved, you know, further and further away from that site, I would get to the tier twos. Then I get further away and I get out to what they call the multi-access edge sites. And I would have some of the technology out there, maybe the data plane portion of the packet core, but not the control plane, you know, because we talked about the, you know, control and user plane separation going on. So we could do that between two different sites, and then I'd put the business applications on top of that location. And then as I move out away from those, I can now go to my retail outlets, put some small CPEs out there, and and build that capability for you know, a retail store, um, a small business, you know, pick your uh, um, type of small business to deliver their services and have their applications. And if we then take a look at what's happened to LTE going to 5G, well that whole radio technology that's out at the edge is a collection of proprietary platforms. Now these are gonna be virtualized as you know, centralized units, distribution units, kind of taking that radio unit and virtualizing it and moving that out and you know, putting compute technology out there. So in order to try and deliver to this, we need to have this common platform approach, not just in the center, you now we got lots and lots of space for data centers, but how to actually deliver this same common approach, you know, for virtualizing these functions, these capabilities out of these other sites to deliver the radio capabilities for us just to make our phone calls and, you know, get our high speed data wherever we want, but also deliver business applications wherever they're needed. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to my friend uh, Hanan, and he's going to talk about the uh, virtual central office. I think you're gonna, I'm going to use the podium too. So. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, Ian, for that introduction. Well, uh, virtual central office. Let's start there. Well, uh, for those who knows, central office are out there. Uh, there is uh, for some people. Hello, Mike. Can we use this one? Hello? Better? Oh, okay. So, uh, as I was saying, um, depending on which side of the edge are you sitting, uh, central office have determination of the beginning of, of, that, uh, of that edge. Um, there's been trying to set up, uh, or at least counting, how many of those central offices are out there, but uh, rough estimation is at around 150,000 of them uh, worldwide. And to get for people that are not acquainted to central offices, this is more or less where they are sitting, between the metro and core networks and the end user. It's around this access network where actually the central offices are sitting, and, and this is where we are trying to uh, step in as a first step for the, uh, for the edge. Um, of course, uh, we have been talking about central offices and, and virtual, uh, virtualization of the central for a while. I just don't want to remind that it's all about services. So the first thing um, is not only uh, for residential, it's been as well used for uh, deploying business services as well. And lately, uh, with the um, mobilization of the network, the mobile, and especially the mobile broadband. This is mainly the focus uh, for uh, the central office today, and I think it's going to be uh, the same for a couple of years to come. Uh, with the OPNFE, uh, especially of the VCO project, we have been working a long time with them, uh, it's been already two years uh, working on the virtual central office uh, uh, proposal. Uh, there is uh, roughly about 60 fa 60, uh, 65 pages of uh, reference architecture out there, and I want to try to resume later on um, on the presentation. But uh, basically, this is what uh, one of the uh, of the case that we uh, presented in the demo it already at OPNFV uh, summit in Beijing. Uh, last year, it was about uh, providing residential services on that uh, virtual central office uh, reference uh, architecture. And you can see here that the main component, of course, remained the virtual VNG. That's your gateway for providing broadband access. 
Um, of course, we have uh, other components as well, like firewalls and, and virtual routers, the whole thing providing services for uh, subscribers. And that was all built on uh, two kind of uh, hardware at the moment that we were using. We were using uh, general purpose servers and as well uh, OCP-based uh, uh, servers. Uh, we have been working with the um, OCP uh, Open Compute project as well for a while on that. And uh, it was the same for uh, the business services. So we'll be able to show this, this one uh, live on stage uh, where we're providing, actually, uh, we have branches uh, right on stage in China. Um, and we connect that to the central office that uh, we're sitting on the labs in, at Lenovo in, uh, in North Carolina and where we have it as well, the head office. And we call uh, uh, over the internet, we call uh, use a secure tunnel uh, to connect uh, the assets uh, on the branch with the central office and as well to provide in local breakout. That was working quite uh, pretty well. And uh, we went uh, discussing with many customers for a while onto, onto this architecture. Uh, main comment uh, that's come after, often was, uh, okay, that's great for uh, residential services and business services. What about mobile services? Well, we took up the challenge. Uh, this year, um, in September, we were at ONS um, in Amsterdam, and we were presenting uh, the mobile use case. Actually, uh, we use a um, real uh, network for that. Well, not real network because, you know, uh, we were using, even though we were using um, public spectrum, we were uh, in a Faraday cage. So we have uh, phones on a Faraday cage uh, using the, uh, the SDR, the software defined radio. And what you can see here is that we uh, use uh, the technology that is specced for 4G. So when I'm talking about the slicing of the network and the splitting of the network, sorry, uh, we use exactly that, but on 4G. So on LT, so we have this uh, radio unit and, and distributed unit uh, together with the central unit. Uh, all of this running on, for 4G, and of course we have a, a APC uh, core uh, that was providing that case uh, services for the, the the two phones on the cage. One of the phone was linked to the internet using the same radio, and the other one was connected to a VPN, so that we could have connectivity to the PBX on the branch that we have on stage. So we will be able to, of course, have access to the internet and have access to the PBX so we could make a call live on stage. This is something that was uh, quite interesting to, to show. And um, one of the things as well that you can see here is that even though we were using very metal uh, nodes for uh, the RU and the U uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the brand, um, an open stack was the platform providing all the components, all the resources for that. So virtual metal services and of course virtualized services for the for the RAM. As I mentioned, we have kind of uh, we published uh, a year ago um, a white paper on the on the reference architecture for um, for VCO, and I will try to reduce that to actually simplify that in one slide. So there is three key principles uh, for virtual central office. Uh, one of them is, of course, the common network controller. Uh, in this case, we are proposing to use Open Delight. We have been using Open Delight for not only controlling uh, the overlay network, virtual networks, but as well controlling the physical network, so the fabric itself. Um, a common virtualization platform. Here is where we are using OpenStack, not only for the NFE infrastructure, but as well for the BIM. One of the things that provide us uh, using OpenStack as well for the BIM is that it gives us um, the possibility to be agnostic towards the orchestrator. Uh, of course, respecting the API. But I'm going to talk about that in, uh, in the next slide. And the next, uh, the, the last uh, piece of that is that we're trying to separate the control plane and the user plane so that we have everything that is related to the control plane on the virtualized uh, infrastructure and everything that is um, required acceleration, uh, we keep it on the data plane. Uh, so far, we has, as I mentioned, we were using Open Delight not only for the, um, for the overlay control of the network, but as well for the, for the fabric uh, itself. And of course, most of the things that we have been doing so far is using Ansible Automation for automating the fabric itself and automating as well the deployment of BNF, uh, deployment of the infrastructure as well. But this is something that uh, is come to evolve. Um, one of the reasons for that is even though we, 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 we and again, as I mentioned before, uh, 
uh, we say uh, we are using OpenStack uh, for the uh, virtual infrastructure manager, um, so that API is giving off the possibility to be network agnostic. agnostic sorry, um, we are looking at uh, how to uh, introduce own app and as well open source mano into the picture. This is something that uh, we will be working on as well, so that you can select whatever orchestrator you want to, to play with the uh, with the central office. Uh, what next? So. And the community, um, we, we don't stop there. So Beijing, we call that VCO 1.0. Um, ONS Amsterdam, we call that VCO 2.0. And uh, we have been thinking about what's going to be next. So there are, there are talk about, uh, OK, Melvin 2.4 actually is stepping into 5G itself. Uh, something about CDN and as well day two. Day two is uh, being one of the critical uh, points for, uh, for delivering the actually deploying this thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, today, uh, later on today, we're going to be having our first call, so the kickoff for VCO 3.0 on the community. Everybody is uh, invited to participate to that, and uh, welcome to provide the input and, and uh, work with us uh, on that uh, adventure. Um, there is one more thing. Uh, I think uh, most of you already know, uh, yesterday, uh, we have announced uh, one of our solution, one of the first solutions actually for the central offices. Uh, we have announced the Red Hat Virtual Central Office solution. This is an open, pluggable solution uh, for the central office infrastructure. We are providing uh, deliver, of course, with, by Red Hat and a select number of partners that uh, are accompanying us in, the, in this adventure. Um, and this provides a common infrastructure for delivering services, mobile services, enterprise, and residential services. Furthermore, uh, we were going to be first focusing on what is, I think uh, Ian uh, quite highlighted that, uh, 5G is taking over all these discussions, and we're going to be focusing first on delivering mobile services. So um, we're going to be uh, working with uh, partners a uh, lot of them actually, that's a part of Radio the Ecosystem. These are our launching partners uh, that want to be providing uh, the hardware, the network fabric, uh, the operating system for the network, uh, the virtual run, virtual EPC, virtual IMS. Of course, we have as well a secure uh, partners for uh, what is going to be the beginning of day two as well related to data protection and as well uh, the um, service assurance. Um, not only that, we're going to have as well partners uh, helping us on delivering that. Actually, we have uh, service integrators as well working with us on this. Um, the technology itself, so um, we have uh, already agreed with partners. Uh, we will be able to show you this, and we want to have a set of technology centers all around the wall so that you can actually uh, see this working live. And um, I hope you didn't expect to see a demo today because it's not going to be happening and you're going to have to wait, unfortunately, to the Mobile World Congress. That is where we want to be actually doing the first uh, technological demonstration of the Red Hat Virtual Central Office solution. So I hope to see you there as well. Um, in the meanwhile, I will ask you to refer to redhat.com slash VCO for more information. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. So, I'm going to take the rest of the time for questions if you guys uh, have any. And I hope so. Yep. Okay, I don't want to spell the surprise for <laughs> Mobile World Congress, but uh, yeah, actually, um, one of the uh, components of the Red Hat Virtual Center solution is based on the Red Hat uh, Ipre Convention Infrastructure for Cloud. So having OpenStack and Ceph uh, integrate into one single um, uh, component that allow this kind of deployment is specifically required for uh, central offices, of course. Other question? Hmm? 
I, I know that this is the first session after the keynote, but I, I hope you guys, uh, well, anyway, um, as, I, as I say, redhat.com slash BCO, you will find us uh, in their uh, solution brief and uh, with all information that uh, you might be looking for. And otherwise, we are available in the, in the Red Hat booth if you have any question and you want to take it on. Okay? Well, thank you very much, and see you soon, guys.